Welcome back. We flew from Barcelona to Doha on Qatar Airways, then on to Kathmandu. The flight was very smooth with excellent food and service. Despite of being quiet, Kathmandu Airport was chaotic due to the endless requirements for documents, faulty immigration machineries, and computers. So it took two hours before we could get out of the airport. We went with the Nepal Checking Experts Company, hence they picked us up and took us to the Buddha Hotel in the heart of Tamil. We had a suite, and due to COVID, it was $30 a day. It was alright, a bit warm, but comfortable, and it was in a great location. We met up with Rajesh and Haugai Prakash in their office after a good nap. Their office was 10 minutes away from the hotel. After the meeting, we hit some old haunts, including one of our favorites, the Everest Iris Bar. Always a fun spot. Tamil was very quiet. No hassle and bustle like how we remembered it. We headed to the Buddha Stupa first thing the next morning. Well worth a visit as we have never been. One thing to remember though, always walk clockwise around the stupa. At 7 a.m. we met up with Prakash and headed off in a private jeep, heading to Salty Cola. We made a few stops to get gas, repair boots, picked up a relative, but the trip was good. We were so glad to have a private jeep as we were looking at busy buses passing us by. The main road between Kathmandu and Pokhara was terrible and rammed with heavy traffic. After about three hours, we turned off the paved highways and eventually stopped at Zamri Bazaar for an excellent doll bat for lunch and first views of Himalayas. After seven hours, we reached Sotikola and we met up with our porter Yadu. We decided to check for two to three hours to get started. We walked from 730 meters to 830 meters, over seven kilometers to reach Labu Bessie. <laughs>
close the door before 7 a.m. to get to Everest guest house at Machacola by 9.30, pushing on to Kola Bessi for lunch. We waited hours for them to prepare lunch, so we didn't reach Dolphin until 4 p.m. and did loads of climbing. There was a massive damage to the path done by the combination of the road being built and a heavy monsoon. Wonderful day for views of the amazing waterfalls. But we were going through some really dangerous drops as the monsoon has destroyed both paths and the new road. place was nice but pretty horrible communal toilet. an hour to cross over a very steep rockfall area. The most frightening we had ever been. River Lodge, which was very nice, and we had our own toilet rather than the smelly, sweaty toilet outside. Started the day at a checkpoint where we found out that we were the only 288 tourists this year passing through this point, very quiet path. Oh, 
considerable drops in wind erosion. Finally, we got to Nam Rung to a really super fancy hotel in the middle of nowhere. What the fudge? What is it doing here with no roads or even a decent path to get to this amazing place? It has a shower and a western toilet. Ah, oh, what a gift from God. It even had a food bar with an excellent selection of whiskeys if you are interested. But we are trekking on Watch the Way trails plus the altitude, so we better stay away from the whiskeys. was very nice but the rooms were very basic with winds whistling through the cracks. The dining room is so lively and we talked to the son of the owner who is a 10 year old who could do a Ruby Q in no time. He spoke excellent English. Very intelligent. also has a very cute puppy. We really love this place, but we were so exhausted to truly enjoy this charming village. From here on out, the view of Manaslu and the other peaks can be seen at every corner we turned. Very beautiful.
a massive star about 10 meters away, but she disappeared before we could capture her on our camera. Star is a massive wild mountain sheep. The mountain views were amazing. Already we saw Himalsuli, Manaslu, and Manaslu North. Summerhand, we saw a festival was going on. It seemed to be a plague as everyone was laughing and people in masks chasing after kids. Lots of monks were involved in the festival and it was in Tibetan language. Later on, we found out that the festival will go on for days. Mucky Manaslu Lodge. It had a poor shower, but the first shower since Lapu. The room was big, but no indoor toilets or indoor anything. The place was in general shabby.
talk was stunning. The lake is fed by the news of the Manaslu Glacier, which broods over the whole area. Weather forecast changed to heavy snow heading to Larky Pass, so all the guys were talking about sprinting to get to Larky Pass before the snow comes. Everyone in the tea house was having the same conversation as the concern for weather was growing. Coming back down from Birendra Tor, the festival in the village was still going strong. We wanted to stay and rest another day at Sam Do, but we didn't. We had to push on to Dharmasala trying to beat the weather. We are now extremely exhausted with bad headache. So we took Diamox and headache tablets. We did feel better afterwards. So a bunch of German trackers in the same tea house were arguing about whether to go ahead to Dhammasala the next day as the forecast was really bad and there's no signal and no way to update the forecast. Eventually they asked us. We spoke to our guy and um, we say we would just push on and not rest another day as it looked like it was looking worse the next day. So this pleased some of the people in the group but pissed off others. It was freezing cold, miserable and a bit worrying. Meanwhile, we drank loads of water to stay hydrated and think positively. So we discussed the option of going back with our guide Prakash. That would take 9 days of trekking backwards, much harder and more dangerous. After talking over, we decided to push onwards as the best play at this point.
are a Dharma Sala. Waiting to cross the Lucky Pass are three Kazakhs, two French, fourteen Germans in two groups, and us American and Scottish. We were up at 4 a.m. and despite there being 25 centimeters of snow here, it stopped snowing and there was a beautiful full moon out. Set off at 4:30 a.m. Half an hour after a group of slow Germans set off, but we met up with them. It was minus 15 degrees Celsius, with little wind, and the snow stopped. Plus, the full moon really helped. There were many false peaks on the way. We were slogging up, struggling with the snow a meter deep. Eventually and finally, we saw the trail flags, and we had maybe a hundred meters to climb, but we weren't sure we could even make this hundred meters. We were so tired and everything was aching. On the way down, we came across an injured porter. We fixed his head, which was bleeding with a combination of our bandage and someone's duct tape and the aid of the Kazakh guy. The way down was very steep. Extremely strenuous, dangerously difficult, but we made it. Alleluia. Larke pas et manasilimal. arrived at Bim Tang finally after 12 and a half hours. One German guy took 17 hours. Good lord. It was the hardest day of our lives. And we would say that for everyone crossing on that day. We were so happy we got to Bim Tang. And we had a wonderful evening with Prakash and Yadu drinking moonshine in the kitchen of Apple Garden Hotel. Oh, what a relief.
everyone who checked with us stopped for a dal batch lunch in a very idyllic spot with beautiful mountain scenery. We're sorry we forgot the name of this place. We stayed overnight at the Superview Hotel. We had our very first proper hot shower after seven days. Can y'all believe it? We were in heaven. Then we had an okay dinner, drank beer with Prakash. Yodu wasn't a drinker, it turned out at all. it would be an easy trek, an easy day, until we discovered that the monsoon had taken out the bridge and so we had to go up to Annapurna circuit for quite a long way until we found a path again. The village of Darapani had lost a number of buildings including a hotel which had been washed into the river. On the way also we passed by
finally, we arrived at the Gurkha Hotel, where we stayed the night eating Nepali snacks, which were excellent, and drinking beer despite the lounge was freezing cold. We started off in a shared jeep. It had three front seats, four in the back. Eventually, we had 11 people inside of the jeep. And God knows how many in the truck bed at the back. There was a poor girl who had already been four hours to my nunk and who was puking for another five hours with us in the Jeep until we changed into our private car. Eventually, Prakash and Yadu left us. Without them, it would be impossible to have done this amazing trek. So our thanks to our porter Yadu and our guide Prakash from the Paul Trekking Experts, who took care of us from the time we landed in Nepal, Kathmandu to be exact, to the time we left. This video is dedicated to them. Thank you very much.